The following video contains themes and footage that some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is highly advised. Hey what's up guys, I hope you're all doing well today. On this video I'm going to be ranking each of the Cenobites from Hulu's Hellraiser, aka Hellraiser 2022. So I recently saw the movie last weekend, it was pretty impressive, I'll even go as far as to say it was one of the best Hellraiser movies since the original from 1987. Yeah, I loved it that much. It had some great scenes, and the Cenobites, they were my favourite set of Cenobites from any Hellraiser movie. Loved them. So today I'm going to be ranking them, and this ranking is going to be based fundamentally on two things. First of all, what they did, their behaviour, of course, their scenes in the movie, their action, and then, of course, their aesthetic, so the art, the visual and the behavioural, <laughs> we can say. So first off, we're going to start with 7th place, and in 7th we have the Mother Cenobite. Now this Cenobite I only remember seeing in one single frame, which is the frame you guys are looking at right now. Um, and I've got to say, I mean, it was just a background Cenobite, barely noticed she was in the movie. But Jesus Christ, look at that design! Holy shit! A Cenobite that's constantly pregnant? Does she give birth? Like, I really wanted to see a lot more of the Mother Cenobite and I hope to see her in a sequel. Um, but looking at her, I mean, wow. What a missed opportunity, they should have given her more scenes. I am gonna let my horror movie <laughs> brain run wild with this one, and I'm gonna guess that she either possibly gives birth to a zombie flesh-like creature that then attacks you, or maybe her specific attack is some sort of weapon coming out of that womb, I don't know. Or is she always pregnant and that's it, and she can't give birth? And that's why she's like in constant suffering. I don't know, but either way, the mother has to come in seventh place, in last place, because other than this one frame, I really didn't notice her presence. Now coming in at number six, very much unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say it's the Mask Cenobite. The Mask Cenobite was one of my top two favorite when it came to the actual design of the costume. But again, just like the Mother Cenobite, he had very limited screen time. I think he still got one line in, but we didn't get to see him torture anyone, we didn't get to see him use any specific ability. You know, some of them tend to, they seem as if they have some sort of, you know, unique power, some of the Cenobites. So we didn't get to see him do that, we just got to see him walk around. And such a great costume. Such a great costume. I would love a figure of the mask, just for the way he looks. So I definitely hope in a sequel he returns. Um, but yeah, I can't rank him higher because he just really didn't do much in the movie. In at number five, I'm going to put the Asphyx, which initially when I first saw this Cenobite on screen, I thought it looked ridiculous. Um, probably an unpopular opinion. I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments what you thought of it. But I just thought the Asphyx looked like a really bad Halloween costume at first. Now, obviously, these are costumes. They're not real, of course. But when I'm watching a movie, especially a fantasy-based one, I want to believe in that moment what I'm seeing is actually happening within that reality. And with the Asphyx, I just didn't get that. Up until that scene, of course, where they were stuck in between those bars trying to get Riley. And I don't know if the flesh got torn or if they were able to sort of pierce through that layer of flesh covering its face, which obviously explains the name Asphyx. Um, but yeah, when I saw the tongue pop out in the head, that's when I was like, okay, now you look cool. Now you look cool because you're playing on the name of Asphyx and and everything, but up until then, I didn't really care much for this Cenobites. They were more of a background one, just like the mask and the mother, but they seem to have less presence than the mask up until that scene where, of course, the Asphyx enters the house and they try to impale it with the blade. Coming in at number four, guys, we have the Chatterer, who I was very pleased to see return in this film. It's always great to see a familiar face, even if it's a demonic one. <laughs> you know, Chatterer is a fan favorite, the Chatterer is an original Cenobite from the first Hellraiser film, so it was great to see him return. I'm going to refer to him as a he. And honestly, the design was pretty good. I didn't love it, but I didn't dislike it. It was, it was a solid design. I do just want to say, in respect to the fans that were upset that he was seemingly killed off in this film, or at least torn apart, I will say the following. If you had to sacrifice a Cenobite in this film, they did well choosing the Chatterer, because it's one we've already seen before, but more importantly, I felt like the Chatterer gave us everything they could in this film. They got enough screen time, you know, they attack someone, unlike the Mask or the Mother Cenobite. They attack Trevor and, and bit his arm. 
you know, the chatterer didn't have any lines because, again, he doesn't speak. He just goes... But I thought everything that had to be done with this character was. So for that, I'm going to give this character fourth place. And of course, this now brings us to the top three. My three favourite Cenobites, the ones I thought looked phenomenal, the ones that had the most screen presence. And there was even a scene outside of Voik's house where we had all three of them pretty close by. So we had in the centre, Jamie Clayton's Hell Priest. I believe on the left we had the Gasp. And on the right we had the Weeper. So there was a Cenobite pretty much in every corner and that was just terrific to see. Imagine being in that position, imagine being Riley, wouldn't that scare the shit out of you? Now of course someone has to take third place, and for me, in third we have The Weeper. Now straight off the bat when I saw the trailer, I was very interested in seeing what this Cenobite would do in the film, and they definitely delivered. I like the aesthetic, you know, the, the bleeding eyes, the fact that they had seemingly these metal rods in their shoulders, and even the way that, like, the flesh on their arms, like, divided, you know, they, they split their arms. That was a pretty creepy scene, and that's what we want in horror. We want something creepy. Now, they didn't say a lot, um, but they did definitely mark their presence by the noises they made. I mean, there was this, like, wheezing meets trying to laugh kind of noise they made. <laughs> Which was just so weird, but I thought it fit the character really well. So I would have liked to have seen a bit more of the Weeper, but I'm happy with what I got for now. So third place for the Weeper it is. And now we move on to the hardest part of this list, which was of course the ranking of first and second place, the best Cenobites from Hellraiser 2022. And this was such a hard one for me guys, because I loved both of these characters so much. They both looked excruciatingly horrifying, which is perfect for a Cenobite in Hellraiser. And both actresses delivered their lines remarkably well, remarkably. So essentially what helped me differentiate them was when I looked back at my notes and I said, okay, put yourself in the action directly. Pretend all of this is real and they're after you. Which scares you the most? Because essentially in a horror movie, if you scare someone, you've done something right. And that helped me differentiate first from second. So in second place is Jamie Clayton's Hell Priest. Jamie Clayton did a phenomenal job. She should be very proud of herself. It's no Doug Bradley, of course. It's hard to be an original. But considering a franchise that has so many shitty movies after the first two, you know, Hellraiser and Hellbound were pretty solid, but the rest just seemed to get worse and worse, she should be super proud. She was spine-chilling, both visually, you know, when she spoke. I mean, just those lines from the trailer alone. It's time. Greater delights await. We wish to see you proceed. All this, all for us. Phenomenal. A phenomenal job. And I'm very excited to see more, hopefully, of this character in a sequel. I mean, she played the main Cenobite. A lot of people online call her the female pinhead. She could definitely live up to that name. The Hell Priest was really, really incredible. I loved seeing her in the movie. She commanded my attention. And that's why she deserves second place. However, why didn't she get first? Who got first? As you probably already guessed, first place was the Gasp. This Cenobite freaked me out the most, and that's why essentially they get first place. Actress Selena Lowe, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, did a phenomenal job just from that first line she delivered. That blade was meant for you. That was just horror perfection. She got a pretty decent amount of lines. You know, this Cenobite visually reminded me of the female meets Angelique, but she was still very much her own Cenobite. And regardless of the lines she got, even when she wasn't speaking, she caught my attention when she was moving towards Serena in that, you know, scene where they're going to kill Serena. And the musical score behind her, that alone was just brilliant. Chef's kiss. And she was also a Cenobite that seemingly had her own power set when she was wrapping those wires around Colin and then she went <gasps> and pulled them. It was like she had some sort of telekinesis. That was really cool too. I'm very excited to see her, hopefully, in a sequel. So this was my ranking of the seven Cenobites from Hellraiser 2022. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Which was your favourite Cenobite? Were you impressed by the film? What didn't you like about it? Let's have a discussion. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed yet, 
please click that subscribe button because there are so many sights for you to see on this channel. <laughs> or not, you find out. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one. Bye, guys.